For those of you that loved RimWorld, this is Flotsam, a really, really cool game where you get to build a city and manage a colony made with junk on top of water. All of this junk, all of this Flotsam. So we have a few people that we start with, along with a bunch of UI elements that I'll explain as I go. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to set some salvage buoys so that swimmers will go around and capture what we need. You can change the size of this. As you'll see right in here, we can get wood and scrap. And I think that this is going to be a good area to start with. We'll just make that and we'll change the number of salvagers to three. And we'll have a few people that are just going out, salvaging this stuff, and coming back with the goods. You can see them swimming and grabbing all the plastic and stuff. You can highlight anything that you'll see as well. Plastic waste, uh, wet wood, which will need to be dried to be able to use effectively. In the building tab, you'll see here that there are a few things that we can start looking at to build. We're going to need food and water, and we're going to need to increase efficiency and the range of where we can get stuff. If we place a, another buoy, you can see that this is a limited range of resources that we can grab. And while you can get plenty when you're swimming, you can see that there's much, much more things that are around that you can get with a boat, right? Like all around. There's not a whole lot in the outskirts here, but when you start getting there... Oh, that's our friendly whale too. He'll, he'll be getting closer. Um, there's also some fish that you'll probably want to get a little bit later and you can't really harvest those that well without a boat anyway so let's let's start by let's let's I guess what we're gonna do is we need to get probably the production online so if we want to increase efficiency in order to be able to produce more goods we'll need a mooring point which is going to allow us to make a salvaging boat and a salvaging boat is has better range and efficiency altogether. So in order to do this, we're gonna need three dried wood. Well, how do we get dried wood? Well, in the workshops tab, you'll see that we have a drying rack. You can dry fish or wood with it. Now, if we just place this and attach it to our, um, I guess our city's heart or our town heart, we don't have that many options. So with the plastic that we've been gathering, we can make a walkway here. So if we make a walkway, it'll just take eight Per notch so let's do two notches here craft it out and it's gonna take 16 plastic and what we'll have is we'll have our guys starting to work on this we're gonna change this to two and we're gonna make sure that this guy just concentrates on construction for a little while while the other guys are just going back and forth and <laughs> scavenging for things. As soon as this completes, we'll be able to attach a drying rack to one of the segments, and then we'll be able to start drying wood. Now, it looks like the other two are going to prioritize helping with the construction as well. Um, and they're using the materials because this holds a little bit of stuff. We have a storage capacity that shows right here, right? But you can see that it holds 60 water and... This is the storage capacity all together. And these are all the resources that we have right now. So we'll want to upgrade storage as soon as we start running out of that. Uh, but first things first, let's go ahead and add that first drying rack. We're just going to add it right there. And once they build that, we'll have to select whether it's fish or wood that they produce. So this guy is going to continue to work on it because the other two are scavenging. And we can fast forward the game a little bit. There's super speed and there's also just fast speed. But we kind of know what we're doing right here. So through the build, I'm just going to fast forward as quick as possible. And let's go ahead and change this to wood. And we're going to start loading up the wood here. Now, while we're waiting, we could get another drying rack going. But... Uh, first, I'm going to increase storage because we're going to start running out real, real quick. You can see here we're at 89 of 100. A couple more trips back and there won't be any place left for us to store and we'll lose efficiency and we don't want to do that at all. So as soon as this is built, they'll start piling it on up and you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see it, them stacking on it. It's kind of cool. You can also check the inventory or change what it actually stores as well. Um, so they're filling it up right now and you can see the dried wood is stacking up right there. It's kind of cool. Anyway, now that we have some dried wood and stuff, let's take a look at our progress towards 
uh, the mooring point. So we're gonna need rope. In order to make rope, we're going to need a woodworking shed. The woodworking shed is, we're gonna need three more dried wood to do that. So all the while, you're not supposed to just know this, right? There's all of these little tutorials that pop up that you can check like camera controls, buoy markers, building, a bunch of different neat things that will kind of guide you through the game. But because you have me here, I'm just going to tell you a little bit how to play and you can go into your own detail and check it out through your own playthroughs. The game is going to be available real, real soon for everyone to enjoy. It's going to be an early access on Steam and you'll be able to check that out with the link in the description below. Let's go ahead and place the workshop here. And once the workshop is done, we'll have to select what we can do with it. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that. It can produce firewood and it can also produce rope. And you can set a queue or you can make it auto queue. So let's just slow this down real quick. And as soon as he finishes with it, I'll show you how that works. Right here, you have rope or firewood. Now we do need one rope to make the mooring point. And to do that, you'll see that the ingredients that we need are dry wood. In order to do that, we have a wood dryer that's working, but after that, we can produce firewood if we like to. Now, you can always set this to auto queue, and auto queues mean they're just gonna keep making it as long as there's storage available um, to, uh, to any degree, you know? They'll just keep producing it. So now that we have that rope made, we can look into a mooring point, but we're a little bit short on dried wood now. We will have the rope as soon as he takes it out of there, but he's waiting on construction. Let's go ahead and make probably one more drying rack. Because this can be converted if we have too much, but really and truly, that will be the best option right now is to get that all set up. And let's go ahead and speed time up again so they do this really quickly. And you can see now if I click on this guy, if I can, if I can actually get to him here. Um, he, well, he has some Z's above his head, right? That means he's getting hey, pretty sleepy. Um, his needs will go up and down as will everyone's. And you really have to control these after a little while. Things can get out of hand and well, they could just pass out. And there are some beds to make, but I don't know how much more efficient the beds are right now. I know I would eventually like to have that happen, but so if you look at this rack, they have an exclamation point above it. Again, we it has nothing to do. So it'll tell you when a building's not in production or when it's not doing anything. And we're gonna want to start getting firewood really, really soon here. Um, because our water supply is basically half of what it started at. And water's a pretty big deal in this game. Um, it kind of consumes the activity of everyone until things are prepared the way they they should be. And it's with only one water uh, filtration system online, or what do we call this, construction distiller, it's really, really difficult to, um, to get a net positive in water. So... Uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do after uh, getting this boat set up is probably going to be to grab the water distiller. Now you can see that we have a little exclamation point above this. This means that we are approaching the general capacity limit, which is bad, right? Um, that means they won't be able to store a whole bunch of stuff. Though one way to reduce this quickly is to look at your resources and see what's really high. And if you have some extra plastic, just go ahead and make extra walkways because you're going to need them anyway. Let's add some walkways here and we're just going to go off in the same direction here. And that'll give our idle villagers something to do as well. And again, these only take plastics. So we're going to have plenty to do with that. Now that he started on those projects, we can look at Mooring Point, and a Mooring Point's available. Let's go ahead and add it down, and he's going to begin construction on that as soon as he's finished the walkways. When the Mooring Point is done, we can add a salvage boat, and that's going to increase our efficiency salvaging. And we kind of want to start looking at water as well, because we're going to start needing it really, really soon here. So let's add the auto queue to Firewood and firewood is going to start being placed as well. Now, here's where it gets tricky, because now that we have an auto queue set up in the woodworking shed, 
these guys will produce like nobody's business. They'll stop salvaging in order to produce and everything. So you kind of need to change their priorities. So we can see who's working on that right now. And it looks like it is, let's see if it allows me to see who it is. Actually, there's a couple people working on it. <laughs> <laughs> let's just change let's just change who does what here so let's take a look at uh, our drifter assignment here and we're going to change let's see we got Sammy Flot we got Hardy and we got Fishbone I think Sammy Flot would probably be the best at this and we can see that we have salvaging stuff around buoys fishing duties hauling duties cooking duties water gathering and designating uh, I'm sorry, desalinating, crafting at workshops. So we're going to change, we're going to make sure that he can craft at workshops and that nobody else can right now. Or actually, what we can do is just stop Hardy from doing it and make sure that he does it all the time, okay? So nobody else is going to work at crafting at workshops right now, nobody. So he's going to be the only one designated to do that. That means the other two will continue hauling and building and everything else while this guy does the dang thing. All right. So they, we have the mooring point set up. Now we can set up a salvaging boat. And we're going to set that up and place that right on the mooring point. When that's complete, we'll have to change our buoys up. Because right now, the buoys are for people swimming. And we want a boat buoy to be able to do this. Plus, it'll be much more efficient than people going out and swimming and collecting like that. So we'll allow that to happen. And as soon as you start construction with this, you'll see that we have the ability to place a salvage buoy. So our resources look really, really good as far as plastic is concerned, but our wood resources are a little low. So I'll tell you what, let's grab, we're gonna do something like this. That'll give us a little bit of plastic and stuff. And we're going to go ahead and take the salvage buoys that we had before and take those away if I can find out where they were. See how it says a boat buoy up top? It'll show you the swim buoy uh, wherever they are. There we go. This one, if we look close at it, it just has like a little recycle symbol on it. We'll go ahead and remove that marker and then the boat buoy will get done. Now he stops mid stride. <laughs> he was like, he was going out there to salvage. He was like, well, no need for me to do this anymore. So we're a little bit low on water now and it's gonna start telling us that we're getting really low on water as well. So the best thing to do right at this point, now that we have a firewood stockpile, we can see that by looking at this or you can actually go to your overall inventory and see uh, the town resources, which is right here. Okay, so let's let's get a water distillery online. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna need for water distillery is a little bit more dried wood, and uh, we should get that as soon as this wood dries right here. Now the boat salvaging has begun. You can see how much more efficient this guy is. He picks up ten pieces before he comes bring it back and he offloads it on the boat and we could designate people for hauling and stuff like that we don't have a whole lot of people to work with but as you progress through the map you'll get more people so uh we're still one dried wood short and we're probably full on capacity right here so we can stop this auto queue if we'd like just for a little while to build up a little bit of wood because we don't have the distiller online quite yet. And as soon as we have that wood, which we do now, we're gonna set up the distillery and it goes right here. So, the distiller is gonna get produced and we'll be able to start using some of that firewood, which we'll wanna redesignate. And we're gonna have to change someone to salination duties as well. So, the duties that we can change here, we'll go through the little drifter manager here, and the water salination we saw was right here. Water gathering and desalination. We're gonna change this to fishbone. Um, actually, let's change it to hardy, okay? And we do want these people to continue to make water if they need to. One, There's only one person that can work at the station anyway, but right now we're gonna let anybody do that. 
So as soon as that's put together, we'll start getting water and it's going to be just in time. There are some opportunities to get water on islands and stuff when you're salvaging, but they're far and few between right now. Our food is good, but we're going to have to start worrying about that soon. And we also have to start worrying about the little quest that we have, the objectives. In order to get out of this area, because we do have a finite amount of resources, we need to get moving. So in order to do that, we'll need this stuff right here. We're going to need metal scraps, ropes, and a mast. And why? Well, because if you go to the navigation, you'll see that we have sails that we can build. And the mast is something that we can only harvest. It's not something that we can produce currently with what we have. And when you look at the map, you'll see that this is how we make progress through the game. After this area, there's another area just like it with some different stuff that you can find as well as resource allocations and you can go so on and so forth. There's resource requirements that you'll need for some areas and it kind of tells you a little bit about the areas that you want to go to and what type of stuff that we can find there. Search as villagers. Uh, you can go here and you can see that there's going to be oil and that there's an abandoned town. There's also fresh water available here. So there's a few different things you can look at and the way the wind is going can kind of help you decide what areas you're going to go to first. Anyway, we're still waiting on the construction distiller to be done. And we're, I guess, we're just waiting on a little bit of materials to be dried or or put together. Or these guys are just really, really worrying about salvaging and stuff. So it looks like we're actually, let's see what this icon means right here is export inventory is full, halted production. So the most inventory they can put out, it's done. It can't be stored anywhere else. So we're short on storage is what they're saying now. We can just continue building storage to expand here. If we take a look at this, it's just going to take eight. And that's probably pretty good here. So let's go ahead and place the storage. And the reason that I couldn't place here is that the tile is saving room for the actual salvage boat. So we'll have room to continue putting our stuff there. And as soon as this salvage is done, it'll show. This guy right here is going to continue to do that stuff. We could remove the buoy for now and make him go and do that. Or we could just let him produce the way he needs to produce and have that going. It looks like the salination project is going pretty well. The distiller is almost ready. We have a buttload of firewood to kind of put together in it, put to use in it right now. So as soon as this sucker is ready, we're just going to fire it up and tell it to auto queue. And there we go, auto queue in the water. Now the fresh water is set up, so we're gonna have the the guy that we designated to do the water, just to fill it with firewood over and over. And then it's gonna start producing water, and this number is going to sustain. Now, with three people, this is really, really tough to manage because this this by itself is only enough to keep us at pretty much flat. <laughs> we don't get a net positive or a storage involved. It's pretty rough. Also, the, the the ability to make beds or small houses, what they're called, they look like beds when you produce them, is also available. And that's something that we're gonna want pretty soon. Um, so, we're kind of waiting for production on drying racks right here. And our, our, our little guy is not making too, too many trips too fast. So, what we wanna do I'm guessing is we're gonna want to move out pretty soon from the island. Let's halt production for just a little bit. Here. We'll remove marker and the salvage should happen relatively soon as soon as they offload the current supplies that are on the boat. Now you can see how many people are working towards salination or desalination of water and gathering really quickly because production has slowed down big time right i mean a lot so you can see now that uh yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty difficult so this is done we already made that salvage okay now that the salvage is done we can actually build the navigation and we can attach that to anywhere that we want on the ship we can even attach it to i believe you could attach it to one of the walkways as well they're gonna put this together and we're gonna be able to move to a new area on the map 
And if we move to an area with fresh water, we'll be able to get that net positive again and kind of allow us to do some things. But we're going to want to get the easy to grab resources before we leave here, as well as make sure our food and water levels are sustained. That's probably the easiest way to do. So let's take a look at the fishing boats here. In order to do this, we're going to need another mooring point, which we're going to need another rope. So in our workshop, we can change this cube to add one rope and let that run. And once that rope is created and we have enough dried wood, we'll be able to do it with that. We can also set this buoy up. Now that our salvage is done, we can set the harvest buoy up for this area. And he's just going to grab a bunch of wood here with a salvage boat. That will increase our wood reserves and kind of help us start filling up the dry racks and get our firewood production back online, which is already lacking. Now, granted, it's much, much easier to do this in a slower motion, but for the progress of the video and just to show you guys how the game works, I figured that I would just do it in full speed. Being that if I was live streaming or something like that, I would probably have it at a slower speed just to be able to move at a pace to where I can make better decisions. But we're, we're working pretty good right now. Even though we're low in water, nobody's died yet, which I, I guess is a good thing. And uh, we, we do have the ability set up to produce water, so it won't be that crucial to get this done. We do have the sails set up so we can move anytime we want to. And if we get to a little bit more wood and get some drying power, I think we're just going to move on here. I could get people going out um, into the water just to gather more materials before we head to the next area. And that might be a good thing to do because the longer we stay here, what's going to happen is people just consume more water and more water. We need to gather more wood in order to, to use in the distiller for firewood, which also takes man hours. And I think even... I think what we really need to do right now is get enough um, water uh, so that we can survive and then find some more people to kind of help us maintain our water levels. Even though they consume more water, it'll be much easier to run with a few of these and uh, a bunch of firewood. So now we have three water, you can see. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna be thirsty to death or anything. We just made a little bit. The salvaging is continuing and it's working out really, really well right now. Now that we've kind of made a little bit of progress, uh, what we need to do is look at the fishing boat and the mooring point again. All we need right here is two dried wood. Let's stop this production. And as soon as the dried wood is done, the mooring point can be added. What we'll need to do is increase this by one more. And then the mooring point can be added. That way we'll have room for it all. And then, <laughs> once the fishing boat is put together, we can start gathering fish, which we also are starting to lose in food reserves. We started out at 30. So this number is going down relatively quickly now too, and fish with drying racks will help. On this side with a mooring point, we're also going to put a drying rack, which will allow us to dry the fish. We can change this out for wood anytime we want, but I think this is a more efficient setup that we'll definitely want. All right, we've got that set up now. Mooring point right here, and then drying rack is going to be right on the other side. All right, so we're pretty much set up. We have the boat loaded with plastic. As soon as they unload this, we'll be able to add our little fishing boat and start getting our food reserves set up, and we should be good. We're just going to fish this little area right quick, and uh, we also need to put together a, another drying rack, as we said before, but we do need uh, the mooring point with the boat first. Uh, the fishing boat is going to require one more plastic, which he's grabbing right now. And as soon as he brings that back to us, it'll be fine. And here he comes. Sometimes it's not really efficient which way you set up your base for them to do that type of stuff. He's loading the wood straight into there. Come on, bring the plastic, buddy. I need the plastic. And we're ready to go fishing boat is going to be set up 
and we're actually doing all right with water, a lot better than I thought we would do. Now that we started building the fishing boat, you see that we have a placing fishing buoy option. We're just going to place it right here. You could change the size of that as well, but it's it doesn't really matter. If there's two close enough, I suppose that they'll go to both of them, but it doesn't really matter how big you send the circle as long as it encompasses that. All right, so finish up the boat. He's adding supplies to it. Now he's starting to hammer it out. The boat is about to be set. And they're going to start fishing in it. <laughs> and we'll be able to have food online. And you can make the cities. I've seen some of the stuff on the trailer to where... They have some pretty big cities involved. Now that we're doing the fishing, you can see that they're starting to add and accumulate fish into their inventory when their progress bar or the storage capacity goes all the way up. They'll come back and they'll start hanging the fish on a drying rack if you have one available. We do not have one available, but we can just change one of the racks right now since we have a surplus of dried wood. We can also just make another storage rack, which we'll want to do uh, in the future, but right now we're just fine like this. Now that all of our numbers are looking pretty decent and we have some fish that are probably good, instead of staying here for any longer, I think as soon as he comes back with this fish, we're just going to head back. Now, keep in mind that you can store raw fish as well. You can see that some fish are stored. So you don't necessarily need to fish the whole time, but you do want to make sure that you can store raw fish when you come back. And for that, you'll need some more storage capacity. That's only a little bit of scrap plastic, but you can see that we're running out of that in the area. We can go and get it a little bit out here. You can see that there's a big supply of it out here, but we can also just go into the next area, and I think that'll be a little bit easier. So it says here that there are some villagers here. There's also an abandoned town, and we can move here. And it progresses down the map, and it reveals a little bit more as you go. And here is our new setup. It starts off paused so you can see what's available. Here is the villagers right here. You can check out what's available here by going to the little quest icons on the side. Uh, and there appears to be a need of person and rescue. You should put them on a boat. And you'll need a salvage ship to be able to do this. You can't go just swimming. Uh, right here it says a shack town. We can scavenge. And it says that we can get items, possibly, and some research points. Which, when we go into research, you'll see that there are a bunch of different things that we can start with. Um, you can get upgrades to your storage yards as well as your housing. You could get upgrades to your workshop so you could process scraps, which you'll find a little bit later. You could get plastic recycler, which allows you to use plastic in interesting ways like constructing with screws and things of that nature. With water, you can unlock small bottles as well as water containers. The solar stills to be able to generate fresh water over time slowly. And a big old desalinator, which um, generates a lot of fresh water. But you can see the cost starts getting a little bit more interesting. And you'll have to get all sorts of stuff to be able to process uh, those advanced materials. But there's a lot of stuff to, be, to, to happen here. And there's a huge map. That's going to be it for this episode, you guys. If y'all want to see some more, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to play a little bit more, either for you guys on video or on Twitch for live stream. Make sure to check me out on twitch.tv slash Zul'jin if you want to see me live, as well as more videos every day on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Zul'jin signing off, and we'll see you next time. Break it down.